this video we will talk about how to determine if two matrices are row equivalent. So what does that actually mean, row equivalent? Well, we say that if two matrices are row equivalent, then it means they have the same solutions to the system of equations that they represent. And the way to find out if two matrices are row equivalent is to take both matrices to reduced echelon form and see if they have the exact same reduced row echelon form. Because if they do, that means they're row equivalent, and in turn, that means that they have the same solutions to the system of equations that they represent. So, for example, let's say we have this group of three equations, and then we have another group of three equations. And we want to solve for x, y, and z, and we want to know if these two equations are row equivalent. So we're going to focus on this first set of equations first. So we'll place these values into an augmented matrix, and then we'll take that augmented matrix to reduced row echelon form, and then we'll repeat the process with the second set of equations and see if we get the same reduced row echelon form. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so if we have this set of linear equations, the first step is we want to place these values into an augmented matrix. So the way that we do that is we create a matrix where the first column of values are the coefficients for the x's. So that would be 2, 1, and 1. So let's write that. 2, 1, 1. The next column are the coefficients for the y values. So we can see that's 3, negative 2, and notice this last equation doesn't have a y value, so that's just 0. The third column will be the coefficients for the z's, so 1, 4, 2, and our augmented column will be the values on the right-hand side of the equal sign, so 12, negative 1, 3. So this is our augmented matrix. Next, we need to use row elementary operations to transform this into a reduced row echelon form. So recall that the first pivot entry, or in other words, the first non-zero value in the first row, we want that to be a 1. So notice that an easy way to do that is we could just swap row 1 and row 2, since there's a 1 right here. And remember, that's a perfectly valid elementary row operation. We are allowed to just swap whatever rows we want. So let's say the first step will be swap row 1 with row 2. So here's what we get. We get 1, negative 2, 4, and negative 1. And then row 2 becomes 2, 3, 1, 12. And row 3 is unchanged. So just the same values that it had. Okay, now our pivot entry right here, or our first non-zero value in the first row is a 1. So that's good. Now, recall that in reduced row echelon form, all of the entries below a pivot entry should be 0. So we need to convert this 2 to a 0. We need to convert this 1 to a 0. So we could start by saying, let's take row 2 and subtract 2 times row 1, because that would be 2 minus 2, which would make this a 0. So let's do that. So let's say row 2 is going to become the original row 2 minus 2 times row 1. So let's see what we get. So the first row is unchanged. We'll just rewrite those values. The last row is also unchanged, so we can write those values. But row 2 becomes row 2 minus 2 times row 1. So 2 minus 2 is 0. The next value is 3 minus negative 2 times 2. So negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. 3 minus a negative 4, that's the same as 3 plus 4. So we get a 7. Next we get 1 minus 2 times, eight, two times 4. So 2 times 4 is 8. So 1 minus 8 is negative 7. And then lastly we get 12 minus 2 times negative 1. Or in other words, 12 plus 2, which is 14. Okay, so we made this value a 0. Now we need to make this next value a 0. So how can we do that? Well, notice if we just do row 3 minus row 1, that would be 1 minus 1, and that would get us to a 0. So let's rewrite this matrix over here and make some room. Okay, so we said row 3 is now going to become row 3 minus row 1. So let's see what we get. So row 1 stays the same. We'll just write those values. Row 2 also stays the same. But row 3 becomes row 3 minus row 1. So here we get 1 minus 1, that's 0. The next entry we get 0 minus a negative 2, that's positive 2. Next we get 2 minus 4, that's negative 2. And lastly we get 3 minus negative 1, or 3 plus 1, so that's 4. Okay, so for a matrix to be in reduced row echelon form, we want all of the pivot entries to be 1. So this first pivot entry is a 1, so that's good. 
but the next pivot entry, or in other words, the first non-zero value in this second row, it's a seven right now, so we need to make that a one. So notice we could just do seven divided by seven, or in other words, every value in row two divided by seven, because this would become a one, so let's do that. So let's say the new row two will be row two divided by seven. So let's see what we get. So the first row stays the same. We're not doing anything to that row. The last row also stays the same. But row two is going to become row two divided by seven. So zero divided by seven is zero. Seven divided by seven is one. Negative seven divided by seven is negative one. And 14 divided by seven is two. Okay, so this pivot entry is a one. This pivot entry is a one. And we said that we want zeros but below all of the pivot entries. So this two needs to become a zero. So how could we do that? Well, we could just say row three minus two times row one, because that would be two minus two, which is zero. So let's do that. So let's say row three is going to become row three minus two times row two. So we get the first row does not change at all. So we'll rewrite that. And the second row doesn't change either. So we'll rewrite those values. Row three is row three minus two times row one. So we get zero minus two times zero. This stays zero. Next we get two minus two times one. That's zero. Next we get negative two minus two times negative one. So two times negative one is negative two. So negative two minus a negative two would be negative two plus two. Or in other words, that's a zero. And then we get four minus two times two. So two times two is four. So we get four minus four. That's also zero. All right, the last step to get this in a reduced row echelon form is to recognize that the pivot entries are all one, so that's good. And we need the values below the pivot entries to be zero, but we also need all the values above the pivot entries to be zero. So this negative two needs to become a zero. So how could we do that? Well, we could just say, let's do row one, so this negative two, plus two times row two, because that would be negative two plus two, which is zero. So let's do that. So let's make some room over here and rewrite this matrix. Okay, so we said row one is going to become row one plus two times row two. So here's what that looks like. So let's start by just rewriting the bottom two rows since those aren't going to change at all. Okay, row one is row one plus two times row two. So one plus two times zero, that stays a one. Negative two plus two times one negative two plus two, so this is a zero. We have four plus two times negative one, so four minus two, that's a two. And then we get negative one plus two times two, that's four, so negative one plus four is three. So this matrix is in reduced row echelon form. And remember the criteria for that is the pivot entry should be one, which these are the only two pivot entries, the first non-zero values in each row. If we have a row of zeros, which we actually do, it should be at the bottom of the matrix, which it is, and there should be zeros below and above all pivot entries, which there are. And the last criteria is that each pivot entry should be to the right of the pivot entries above it. So we can see that this pivot entry is to the right of this pivot entry above it. So we're good. So this matrix is in row reduced echelon form. Now, we want to go back to that other set of equations, convert that to an augmented matrix, and then get it to row re reduced row echelon form and see if it matches this matrix. Because if it matches, then that means the two matrices are row equivalent. So let's do that. Okay, so here was our second set of linear equations. So we're going to use the exact same process where we place these values into an augmented matrix, and then we convert the matrix to reduced row echelon form. So if we create this matrix, the first column will be the coefficients for the x's. So that would be one, three, and notice this last equation doesn't have an x, so that'd be zero. So we'll say one, three, zero. The next column is the coefficients for the y's. So two, negative one, positive one. The next column will be the coefficients for the z's. So this first equation doesn't have a z, so that's zero. Then we have seven and negative one. And the augmented column will be the values to the right of the equal sign. So we have seven, seven, two. Okay, so how can we convert this matrix to reduced row echelon form? Well, notice the first pivot entry, or the first non-zero value in the first row, that's a one, so that's good. 
we want to make sure that all of the values below it are zero. So this one's already a zero, but how can we get this three to be a zero? Well, notice we could do row two minus three times row one, because that would be three minus three, which would be zero. So let's do that. So let's say the new row two is going to become row two minus three times row one. So what would that look like? Well, the first row doesn't change at all, so we'll just rewrite those values. The last row doesn't change either, so we'll rewrite those values. But row two is now row two minus three, time, three times row one. So we get three minus three times one, so three minus three, that's zero. And then we get negative one minus three times two. So three times two is six, so negative one minus six, that's negative seven. And then we have seven minus zero times three, so seven minus zero, that's seven. And the last value will be seven minus three times seven. So three times seven is 21, so seven minus 21, that's negative 14. Okay, so from here, our first pivot entry is a one, that's good, but our next pivot entry currently is a negative seven, and we want it to be a one. So an easy way to do that would just be to divide negative seven divided by negative seven. So we can say the new row two is going to be row two divided by negative seven. So let's see what that looks like. So we'll rewrite the first row, that's not changing. And we'll rewrite the last row since that's not changing. So row two is itself divided by negative seven. So zero divided by negative seven, that stays a zero. Negative seven divided by negative seven, that becomes a one. Seven divided by negative seven is negative one and negative 14 divided by negative seven is two. Okay, so our pivot entries are both ones, that's good. And we want all the values below the pivot entries to be zeros. So this one right here needs to become a zero. So an easy way to do that is just take row three minus row two, because that would be one minus one, which would give us the zero we need. So let's rewrite that over here. Okay, so we said row three is going to become row three minus row two. So here's what that looks like. We'll rewrite the first row, that's not changing at all. And we'll rewrite the second row since that's not changing at all. So row three is becoming row three minus row two. So we get zero minus zero, that stays a zero. One minus one is zero. Negative one minus a negative one is negative one plus one, so that's also a zero. And then two minus two is zero. Okay, so our pivot entries are ones and all values below them are zero. But another criteria for reduced row echelon form is that all values above the pivot entry should also be zero. So this two needs to become a zero. So how could we do that? Well, we could say just take row one and subtract two times row two, because that would be two minus two, and that would get us the zero that we need. So let's do that. So let's say the new row one is going to become row one minus two times row two. So that looks like We'll rewrite the last two rows since those aren't changing at all. Okay, so we get row one minus two times row two. So one minus two times zero, that stays a one. Two minus two times one, two minus two is zero. Zero minus two times negative one, so that's zero plus two. And lastly, we get seven minus two times two. So two times two is four, so seven minus four is three. Now this matrix is in reduced row echelon form. The pivots are ones, there are zeros above and below the pivots. If there is a value of zeros, which there is, it's at the bottom and each pivot entry is to the right of any pivot entries above it. So this is in reduced row echelon form. And if you'll recall, if you rewind the video just a little bit, you'll find that the previous matrix matched this matrix perfectly. So in other words, the two systems of equations had the exact same reduced row echelon form. So we would say as our final answer that the two matrices were row equivalent because they had the exact same reduced row echelon form.